Hey folks, welcome to Bear Mountain today. We're working on a kind of trying to find a faster way of turning a bed over. In the past, what we've done is we've uh, typically either knocked down a cover crop and threw a black tarp on it for about three or four weeks and then come in and plant it. But we're toying with the idea similar to um, what was presented by Tobacco Road. Uh, you can find them in uh, the no-till organic uh, book that Andrew Murford did as well as on the uh, no-till market podcast and uh, the owner of the farm is kind of he developed a way of using solarization to kind of knock back cover crops and then speed up the transition and planting so we thought we would try that out um, we've got this project here that we're just going to knock down this was a cover crop that had clover growing in it from last fall it's also got a few annual weeds in it too you might notice what we're going to do is we're just going to come through at the scythe cut it down to oh, maybe a couple inches off the ground and there's still irrigation lines under here so we don't want to go too deep and then uh, it's really wet underneath this cover crop the soil's got plenty of moisture on it then we're going to take a plastic uh, spare old greenhouse plastic that we had used for low tunnels and we're going to put that over the top of it uh, and depending on how the weather goes it could be as fast as a day or so or maybe it might take a couple of days we don't want to leave it on too long that it starts affecting the soil biology, but long enough to kill off what's on the top. Then we're going to see if that makes sense that we could just plant directly into that duff, like um, sunflowers or other transplants that are you know fairly good size, and see if that will speed up the process instead of being a couple of weeks, it'll be just a few days. Um, if that doesn't work, we don't want to leave the plastic, clear plastic on too long, so what we'll probably do is is uh, just finish it off with a black black uh, tarp like we normally do but we're going to test it out we're, so we're going to do this one here and then we have another one that we started a couple of days ago in one of our hoop houses and so we can go in and check and see what the status of that is it's on its second day now and um, we were taking out a bed of poppies so we'll see how that looks so i gotta get started here i go Okay, if you didn't have a scythe or a sharp instrument like that, I mean, people have weed eaters, you could use those too. Uh, we just use the scythe because it does a pretty effective job. It's uh, low energy input and um, it's kind of cool to use. But uh, if, you, if you didn't have that or any kind of mechanical thing, what you could do is just um, walk it and knock it over. You know, not talking about tromping on the bed too much, but just to knock the big stuff over and get it as close to the ground as possible. And then that um, uh, would probably be good enough to get it started. So what we want to do is we want to develop a fairly narrow air pocket between the plastic with the plants in it and the ground itself. So the, the objective here is that we're heating these plants up to the point where um, a lot of the surface residue will die, uh, moisture will escape It'll from the plants, hit the plastic and drop back into the soil. So the idea is it's just going to kind of like uh, percolate in here for a while. So the objective is just knock the big tall stuff down. And you can do that with your feet. Or if you had like a chain or, um, you know, old fence post or something of that nature, you can just drag it over it. You know, that would do it as well. Okay, we've knocked down the cover crop. We just basically chopped it down to get the tall stuff out, and we're ready now to put the plastic over. This plastic width that we're using is about um, probably eight feet, and maybe it's a little more. And it's uh, we're gonna just lay it on the top. Um, we'll show you how we move it on. This was an old piece of plastic, so it's got some rodent damage to it. So we're gonna kind of fudge it a little bit by putting some uh, scrap pieces underneath where the holes are. Um, thank you to the rodents who chewed a beautiful pathway and made nice even holes every four feet. Um, so we'll we'll do that, and that will probably be enough to seal it up. 
um, because the extra plastic, it'll leave like a double layer on it. So let's move the plastic on and uh, get it lined out. Okay, it's not much more complicated than putting, uh, cutting the, the material down and then bringing the plastic over the top. We can already tell that it's starting to heat up underneath it because we can see some condensation on the plastic. We had a little trouble towards the end there. I had some ants that were uh, making a home in the plastic and uh, so I had to get those shake off. The last step we're gonna do is put sandbags around the edges and then we'll leave this guy for a day or two and see how it goes. Okay, well, one of the last things to talk about here is just the principle of what we're trying to do. And the technique we're using is uh, kind of experimental for us. We've never done this before. Um, we're just assuming that, you know, if you get a certain width on this, that the bed itself is about four foot, a little over four foot in width. And what we did is we laid the plastic out a good foot, foot and a half beyond that. So we'll also kill off any grass or at least knock it back. I shouldn't say kill it off because one of the things about solarization is it's going to take out young weeds. It's going to maybe cook uh, the residue that's in there pretty good. But if you have perennial weeds like thistle or bindweed or you know, cooch grass or quack grass, it'll probably knock those things back, but it's not gonna kill them. So the whole thing I guess we're trying to do here principle-wise is how fast can we turn the bed over? That's kind of where we're really getting to. We've got three different techniques here and that we took some still photographs of them too. This technique right here we did today using the clear plastic for solarization. The bed next to it was the same thing. It was a cover crop. We tarped that uh, on our traditional way. Uh, this time of year, because we're heading into what we considered a bit drier, uh, we used uh, we took a hundred foot piece and we folded it over a couple of times to get um, multiple thickness on there. But that's just your standard poly weave landscape fabric, and it does breathe some, but. Um, it takes longer for the refuse and the weeds and things to die under it. The next bed down that you probably saw had some lisianthus on one end that were just planted in and we left the last 20 feet of it so tarped. One of the things we do if we're not ready to plant um, we'll leave a tarp over the bed uh, for a short period of time. I mean you wouldn't want to leave a tarp on there for you know all season long unless you're trying to kill off some pretty nasty perennial weeds but uh, it just kind of helps us during this time when we get spring rains and things that uh, instead of you know letting a new flush of weeds get started if they do get started underneath that tarp they'll come up and they'll die so that when we do plant in a week or two um, the soil level is still pretty clean so that's just one of the principles of, of using these tarps and the occultation is you don't necessarily got to peel the entire bed back if you're not ready to plant the entire bed just peel back the part you need so we're hoping a couple days this will be cooked up pretty good and then we'll see if we can plant some sunflowers into it
So again, you know, this is kind of a new thing. Again, it's about principles, and we left a pretty heavy residue cover in there. So we'll see how that that gets down. Um, the idea again is is that the heat will will cause these things to basically start decomposing on them themselves pretty rapidly. It'll be somewhat of a little bit of an anaerobic environment in there, but uh, hopefully after a day or two, that uh, that heat has worked itself down and actually killed the entire plant, uh, not just you know kind of cooking the residue. So we'll see. Maybe we got it on too thick. We'll find out. This bed, uh, we threw the plastic over it two days ago. Uh, it actually, yeah, two days ago this afternoon. And it was a uh, bed of poppies that were finished. The plants were still green. And what we did is uh, we very quickly went through with a little hand sickle, I'll show you that in a second, and just kind of lopped them down to take the, uh, any kind of spent bloom spikes or what on it that uh, we didn't want poking through the plastic. This is the same type of plastic, just some old refuse plastic we had on the farm uh, that's a 6 mil UV greenhouse. And I put a, uh, a compost temperature probe from the side into the inside. It's been a little overcast today, but uh, the temperature inside is about 120. So it's uh, baking pretty good. One of the things we notice is that the plants themselves are are definitely dying off. Um, the ones that seem to be the longest or slowest to die off are the ones that are onto the inside and we think that that's probably more related to the fact that we may have a little bit of an air gap here since we didn't in the tunnel put sandbags as many as we probably should have. But the other side of it too is this tends to be the north side of the bed and the south south edge of the bed is completely dead. So with the sun being the way it is, it may just be a factor of, you know, where the sun's at relative to uh, the side of the bed. But it is dying off. And we've noticed just depends on uh, some plants are maybe a little more vigorous than others. We've had more overcast than they have had sun in the last two days. So we're probably going to just keep an eye on this and let it go a little longer. But let's peel it back and take a look at least at some of it and see what it looks like. Wow, it is pretty hot in here. Holy cow. <laughs> you can feel it coming off. Yeah, you can feel it. Now, I've stuck in this temperature probe down into the soil about an inch, and uh, it temperature dropped a lot. It, it's like 85 down an inch below, so. But I can feel the heat but coming But you can off. feel the heat coming off of this, and you can just see this stuff is just absolutely cooking. It's almost too hot to the touch right here. It also has sort of a funky smell. Well, that's, like like we're cooking yeah, something that's, that's in the exactly. house. Exactly, it's almost like we're cooking spinach. Yeah, <laughs> it's just kind of a snarky we'll let, smell. <laughs> we'll let the sun work on that a little longer, and then um, get this thing sealed back up the best we can. So air slip through. How many more days do you think? Well, if we can just get, you know, some consistent sunshine, that's really going to be the key. I mean, right now the sun's out, but it's been, this is the first time today it's been out. So it's just now getting to the point where it's heating up. And, yeah, overcast uh, mornings. Yeah, every overcast morning. mornings, and, and that's just, um, it's slowing down the process. I think, you know, if you did this on a summer day where it was like sunny right from the beginning, you could probably cook this in a day or a day and a half. I wonder if it would be as intense smelling as it right now. Well, the smell will go away as soon as you pull it up. Yeah, I get that, but it's just like we are cooking something. Right, so the, the objective here is we're not going to, we're just going to do something really funky weird here. We're not going to clear off the residue once these plants are dead. We're just going to plant into it. I hope this works. Oh, it'll work. I have faith. So anyway, folks. This was just kind of a experimental thing we wanted to show, talk about. Could this speed up our bed turnover process even faster without you having to use any kind of occultation? Particularly, I'm not so too concerned about in the tunnels um, because lots of times in the tunnel we can just go through and just rake it off or clean it off and it's pretty fast turnover. But in the field, if this could 
kill off the weed seeds um, that might have got started under a flower crop faster and help soften up any kind of crop residue faster that you know from that standpoint it, it may help with our turnover dramatically we're still going to use occultation tarps that everything's got a roll we're just trying to experiment and figure out what's the best in the context of what we have going and how well it, will it work so anyway, if you like this video Please uh, hit the subscribe button, check out our other videos on our channel. We uh, welcome you to look through our playlists and leave a comment if you like. We try to get back to all our comments as, as relatively as fast as we can. And uh, hope you guys all have a good day and thanks for watching. Bye. Bye bye.